I'd like to call to order the April 1st regular 2014 regular meeting of the Bowling Green Board of Commissioners. I invite you to stand with me if you choose. Uh, I'll offer the invocation this evening. Father, we thank you for such a wonderful day. We're so happy that the sun was shining and it got up in the 70s. It just made for a wonderful time for all of us. Thank you for this community and what it does for the people who live here. And we pray that you'll guide us as we make our decisions this evening that we can uh, better this community as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm inviting tonight uh, Scout Steve Geico from Troop 705 at Holy Spirit Catholic Church. And he will be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody would stand. Please join me in the pledge. Pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America. Of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. Ms. Schaller, please call the roll. Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Waltrip. Here. Commissioner Williams. Here. Commissioner Denning is absent. Mayor Wilkerson. Here. Uh, and do you have any awards and recognitions? I, I do not, Mayor. I have uh, four items to bring to our attention. We want to wish uh, Assistant Fire Chief in Training Norman Simpson well as he retires after many years of service. Uh, he's been here for quite a while, and uh, I hope Costa Rica can take him coming there because that's his plans. Costa Rica. All right. Uh, second, I'd like to... Uh, congratulate uh, on behalf of Commonwealth Health Corporation for being recognized one of only 36 organizations across the globe that received the uh, Great Workplace Award from the Gallup organization. That's a, that's a really big deal, so we congratulate all of those who are working for Commonwealth Health Corporation. Uh, secondly, or excuse me, thirdly, Hazardous Waste Day uh, is April 26th from 8 to 2, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Greenwood High School, and that's an opportunity for anybody in Warren County to bring their hazardous waste, whether it's uh, paint, uh, leftover pesticides, or anything along that line, uh, and dispose of them for free. There'll be uh, a lot of people there to help you unload it as well. So that again, that's April 26th at Greenwood High School. And then uh, finally, uh, on behalf of the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, I'd like to call our attention to the proposed roundabout that they have uh, planned for University Boulevard and Loving Way and the bypass and Nashville Road. Now, they're going to be closed this Sunday, closing that intersection this Sunday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then again on April 13th from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, to do some... Uh, relocation of utilities so that's this Sunday and the following Sunday pretty much all day so if you can find a detour they have it on the website but if you know anything about Bowling Green you should be able to find your way around town pretty easy but don't just be prepared for that uh, uh, problem Once again area. mayor who is responsible for that roundabout oh yes thank you for reminding me the state highway department if the highway if the road has a number on it like US 31w or or Kentucky 80, the State Highway Department makes those decisions about roundabouts. So <laughs> I'm sure Greg Meredith is watching us yes. tonight. So. Mr. DeFebo, you have some comments for us, please. Yes, Mayor. Uh, there'll be a need for an executive session. Uh, Katie will read the reason. Pursuant to KRS 61810B for deliberation on the future acquisition or sale of real property by the city, but only when publicity would likely affect the value of the specific piece of property to be acquired for public use or sold by the city, in KRS 61810G, discussions between the city and a representative of a business entity in discussions concerning a specific proposal if open discussions would jeopardize the siting, retention, expansion, or upgrading of the business. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill and second by Williams. Is there any discussion? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Have the approval of the regular meeting minutes on March 18, 2014. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Now we set aside time in our meetings for uh, public comments, and that's for any item that's not on tonight's agenda. We would invite you to come to the microphone and uh, speak your piece. Mr. J.C., I believe you're here with us tonight to 
have an opportunity to bring something to our attention. My name is J.C. Ninus, and it's spelled N-I-N-I-O-S. And I live on Benson Street, and the address is 1614 Benson Street, Bowling Green, Kentucky, the zip is 42104. And what I'm here for tonight, remembering my dad's words, he said, the good Lord gave you two ends, one for thinking and one for sitting. And it depends on what you do with them, they'll either come out heads or tails. <laughs> I just thought I'd <laughs> give you that. And uh, I've lived in, in, over in that area over 50 years. And 28 years ago, me and Mad Shields, who lived across the street from me, she deceased about two months ago. And uh, everybody there wants the street opened up. It's right back in my house. And uh, one lady said, I don't care if it stays that way, but I'm not going to say yes, but most everybody else did. So I thought, well, I'd come down here and do whatever's right to say or act or pay, whatever it is, to try to get that doggone thing opened up. So you're talking about opening or attaching Benson all the way over to, what is it, Professional Park Drive? Is that what it's called? Well, over to the IRS office area? Well, that's like a little community over there. There's a, the street that I live on. You come in Benson Avenue, there's 15 houses from the beginning to the end. And then it splits and on both sides. That's Elizabeth Street. There's 11 houses over there. And uh, uh, I didn't know what we have to do to get that thing open. I understand. What we'll do is, is take your recommendation, and Mr. DeFebo will look into that and pass it to the Public Works Department. And uh, if you'll give, a, if you can write down your phone number, uh, then we'll get back in touch with you as far Got as that's any concerned. Donors? Is that all right, sir? Yeah, give give Mr. Right DeFebo a call. That's his phone number there. Long arm, long arm of the law. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kevin. You're welcome, sir. Oh, am, I, am I finished, or do you want me to keep on talking? Well, it's up to you, but I think we understand the, the issue that you brought to our attention. Tell I think most of us know where Benson runs into that uh, little subdivision, that business subdivision over you there. You know what the gum said to the shoe? I'm stuck on you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> and you know why you can't tell secrets to the bank? That's because they got a bunch of tellers. And oh. you know why a guy went to work in his bathing suit? No, sir, I don't. I want to hear this one, though. Go what ahead. Is it? He was in the carpool. <laughs> <laughs> I could keep telling you them, and keeping these people from coming up. God bless every one of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be in contact with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. Thank you for coming down. We appreciate you taking the time to share that with us. Is there anyone else that has comment for us this evening? All right, we'll move right into the items for consideration. I'm sorry, I'm sorry was there someone else? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, please come up. Your name and address, please, sir, for the record. Which address? Uh, Steve Nelson, uh, 220 Winston, uh, here in town. I'm a property owner and, and here just to speak on maybe behalf of, of uh, our tow truck incident, the ordinance that's going on with Randy here, uh, just just as a different perspective. Um, hearing Joe Denning, I kind of was hoping he was here tonight, but uh, his comments last week um, really frustrating to hear. Perhaps uh, what seemingly is not the facts in getting those things checked out. Um, from a property owner's perspective, we've had several tow truck drivers in the past um, trying to manage parking lots in the city limits, keeping. Our tenants a place to park and uh, other people off so that those tenants have a place to park that's part of their rent they, they're paying for that um, and when you've got a guy that's doing an excellent job an excellent job um, and being ridiculed and uh, statements made derogatory towards him my wife had called and spoke with uh, Joe Denning and uh, was overly, uh, I don't know how to say it, just mouth wide open that 
somebody would talk to her in that, that way. And, and the fact that he's not here, I probably should say no more. Um, but I'm just, just speaking on behalf of the other perspective. There are people who get towed and uh, maybe they've got a sob story that's worth hearing. But from the other perspective, there is another side to that coin. And, and that's what I'm here just to, to say. There are people who value people who do their job and do it well and keep our parking lots uh, and, and with regard to, to part of that, uh, Mr. Febo and staff looked carefully into the issue that he brought to your attention and found okay. out that the removal of that vehicle was appropriate in that it was on okay. your property and not, not on the public right of way. Yeah, I appreciate that. So that's it. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Anyone else? All right. The uh, first item for consideration is Municipal Order 2014-54. Municipal order approving the appointment of Johnston S. Boyd to the Bowling Green Warren County Historic Preservation Board. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Waltrip. Uh, this is filling a vacancy, and it escapes me now who had to. Oh, Sean. Uh, no. I forget who resigned Jason to. Smith. Jason, Jason Smith. Smith. Yes, Jason Smith had to uh, resign because of a job that he took out of town, and Johnston Boyd is. Uh, very knowledgeable in the building field and helpful to step up to this board for us. Any other comments? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-55. Municipal Order authorizing and accepting the purchase of Pulsar Chlorine Briquettes from Spear Corporation of Rochdale, Indiana in the total amount of $29,814 for the Parks and Recreation Department. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip, second by Hill. Mr. Febo? Uh, the city of Bowling Green uh, employs what is known as a pulsar chlorinator system uh, that requires it, us to use uh, chlorine briquettes uh, made by a certain company for that product. So we're here tonight to uh, ask you to purchase from the sole source of those briquettes and to uh, approve the amount in $29,814. Brent uh, Belcher is here if you have any questions about the briquettes or the chlorinator system. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-56. Municipal Order approving the renewal of bid number 2013-24 for banking services from U.S. Bank for a period of four additional years. So moved. Second. Motion by Waltrip, second by Hill. Mr. Tibble. Thank you, Mayor. Last year, we went out to bid for banking services for the city. Uh, the lowest appropriate uh, bid was uh, won by U.S. Bank. Uh, we used a different protocol uh, in this bid. We went for a one-year approval, and if that was satisfactory for a four-year uh, re-sign up uh, or a continuation of that same contract, Jeff uh, told me today that it's those next four years will be at the same price as this year, so it's a good deal for uh, the city and we're happy with the uh, U.S. Bank services. Jeff, do you want to add anything? Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-57. Municipal Order approving and authorizing the mayor to execute a motorcycle lease agreement with Motorsports of Bowling Green Incorporated for lease of four standard packet police package Harley-Davidson motorcycles for the sum of one dollar each. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Febo. This is a collaborative partnership between uh, the Harley Davidson uh, dealership here in Bowling Green and our, our police department. Under this uh, partnership, uh, we were able to receive uh, essentially four new motorcycles for one dollar. And uh, we use those for a year. Uh, we give it back to Harley Davidson. They're able to resell them, and we get four new ones. So it's a pretty good deal for the city, and I think it also helps Harley Davidson. Uh, we use uh, police motorcycles uh, in the day to day activities, but uh, particularly in the specialized police services. Doug could probably uh, spot forth about how we use those if you would like. Do you want to have any comments or questions? I just want to thank the Martin family. They, they began this program years ago it was under, under you, uh, and they have continued it now for many, many years, and it's a great benefit to us. And I understand that the 
motorcycles actually increase in value after they're actual police bikes, right? Well, we understand. All right. We didn't think, yeah. we didn't think we'd try to get to Mr. Martin said, well, how about four? He wow. drove a hard bargain. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks again to the Martin family. Please call the roll. Hell? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-58. Municipal order authorizing the submission of a letter of interest to participate in the Southeast Recycling Development Council 120 program. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill and second by Williams. Mr. Febo. At 4 o'clock, we had a show and tell with uh, Stan Reagan, the uh, Warren County Recycling Solid Waste Coordinator. Uh, I think he gave a nice presentation explaining the opportunity we in the city of Bowling Green have to uh, reinvent our recycling approach and to participate in a grant. Uh, Mrs. Hill asked him if it would cost us anything. The answer was no. Will it cost the citizens anything in the future if we get the grant? No. So it appears to be a win-win. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. <coughs> Municipal Order 2014-59. Municipal Order authorizing the City of Bowling Green to purchase property located at 519 West Main Avenue from New Bethel Baptist Church for park purposes. So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion by Williams, second by Hill. Mr. Fibbo. Again at 4 o'clock, uh, John Brent uh, Belcher gave us an overview of the exciting new plans for building a, a new uh, playground on West Main. Uh, we're here tonight to start that process and ask you to allow us to uh, purchase uh, the property located at 519 West Main Avenue uh, to start the, the park. Uh, our intent is to purchase it and to use the upcoming uh, park and rec budget to build the actual park. Uh, Mr. Belcher is here if you have any questions. Comments or questions? I just say that uh, the presentation was great earlier today. Made a lot of sense, and uh, this is going to be one of those one of those uh, facilities that's a great for the neighborhood. All right. Please call the roll. Hill. Yes. Waltrip. Yes. Williams. Yes. Wilkerson. Yes. Municipal Order 2014-60. Municipal order authorizing the approval and submission of fiscal year 2015 annual plan for housing choice voucher program. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Fibber. Since we receive uh, HUD CDBG entitlement funds, we're required to submit not only a five-year plan, which Brent uh, Childers has done recently, but uh, submit an annual uh, plan for use of those funds. Uh, the plan is in, in your packet. Uh, Mr. Childers is here if you have any questions uh, about the housing choice voucher or annual plan. Any comments or questions? Please call the roll. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. Wilkerson? Yes. Municipal Order 2014-61. Municipal Order approving agreement and accepting roadway lighting project maintenance at the intersection of US 31W Nashville Road and US 231X University Boulevard, located in the city limits, to be designed and constructed by the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. So moved. Second. Motion by Hill, second by Williams. Mr. Phil. Uh, the city of Bowling Green has a standing protocol with the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet to uh, pay for the lighting of all, uh, of all state roads in the city and where lighting is placed. Uh, behind me, you can see the new uh, roundabout. Uh, it will have a lighting, probably much needed lighting, and the city has been asked to uh, pay uh, the lighting bill for that project, which we do for all other state roads. Uh, so I'm here to ask your uh, approval of the contract. And there are already street lights at that intersection. You yeah. have to go through this Upgrade. process. And uh, District Engineer Greg Meredith was uh, planning to be here, and I encouraged him to stay at home with his family. I didn't think there was any problem with this. So. And again, this is a state project. <laughs> <laughs> I think he had to, I didn't want him to actually get the harassment in, in person. So, all right, please call the roll. Hill. Yes. Waltrip. Yes. Williams. Yes. Wilkerson. Yes. First reading, ordinance BG 2014-6. 
Ordinance annexing property by consent. Ordinance annexing 2.11 acres of property located at 5575 Scottsville Road with property presently owned by the Sheldon Family LLC and said territory being contiguous to existing city limits and further approving agreement related to annexation incentives. So moved. Second. Mayor, I think it would be appropriate for Mr. Harmon to give an overview of the process and what okay. we have tonight, if that's okay. That's great. Uh, I'll kind of repeat what Mr. Febbo said earlier. Today at 4, it seemed like we discussed everything today at 4. We had a presentation about the uh, annexation policy, uh, about the five areas around town that we have designated as the areas that the city would like to move in. Uh, we did receive requests by the Sheldon Family LLC to annex some property that's immediately across the street, a road that's adjacent to one of our five, probably our first top area we'd like to annex. Uh, so this ordinance uh, is this consensual annexation. So this ordinance uh, approves the annexation. They did want to participate in the incentive program. Uh, so this this board also adds that little small two acres that they want uh, into a, an approved uh, annexation zone in the same ordinance here tonight for you to do that. You know, it's basically, I think we first looked at it, we pretty much considered it to be the same, but when you actually look at the map, it's, a, it's across the road and not within one of the five areas. Uh, so this ordinance designates this uh, by itself uh, as one of the uh, proposed annexation zones, especially since we, uh, they requested the incentives and this approves the incentives agreement with them as well. And the incentives we talked about um, is a five-year rebate. They will pay property taxes. By Kentucky law and constitution, we have to collect property taxes. Uh, but this incentive program will rebate those property taxes back to the property owner that they generate for a five-year period. Make sure everybody understands this is not property taxes that we're getting now. Uh, and also what they're rebating is city property taxes only. This will not impact uh, county school taxes uh, or any other taxes. This is just the, uh, the city tax that they, they will generate uh, over a five-year period. Uh, as we said at four, uh, they get the uh, rebate for a five-year period. They have five years to contact us, let us know when they want that uh, rebate period to, um, uh, to initiate or to activate. My understanding of reading the paper about this one, I think this one will be pretty quickly because I think they plan on building and, uh, uh, and having this developed in the next few months. So I think they will be coming back to us fairly quickly and activating their rebate period. One, one comment, please. Okay. Oh. Mike Grubbs at the 4 o'clock meeting also said that any other property that we choose to bring in uh, through uh, consensual annexation could also, at the desire of the commission, receive the incentive as well. So this may be open to other, other uh, entities too. Well, the, the policy has a couple of things. We, we designate five areas, but the policy does give the board of the commissioners the ability to add other, yeah. uh, other zones. Uh, I think also you've got the ability, if you want to, to expand those five. This is almost what this is more an expansion of the one of the fives than it is a new one. Uh, and also the policy does provide too that uh, while this is aimed at mainly commercial and maybe industrial type that will generate, uh, um, uh, I guess, incentives to, to pick up um, our occupational fees too, but the, I think the policy mm -hmm. also has language in it that to be able to bring in those projects if we have to buy, if we have to bring in developed land, including residential land, that's between us and where we need to bring in that we've got the ability to bring those in and offer the, uh, offer the incentives to those as well. Because sometimes, like I said, we have to touch uh, or be reasonably close to what we want to annex, like cross the road or whatever. So from time to time, we may have to go through, uh, and by consent or whatever, but we, we may have to go through residential properties to get to those commercial properties we want. So this policy also authorizes us to provide incentives uh, to those residential lots if we have to, uh, in order to get to the, uh, to get to the other ones. Commissioner Williams. Uh, j just for the public's knowledge, we might want to provide a little bit better description of exactly where this piece of property is mm -hmm. that uh, we're talking about at the at the current time, because people may not know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, it's going out Scottsford Road, and I should know what's the name of the street. It's uh, Plano. <laughs> Plano Road. Plano, Plano. Plano Road. Is, uh, if you turn on Plano, it's right to the left of it, uh, uh, near the uh, basically across the street from Deemers. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty much where it is. Uh, and our major annexation, Demers is already in the uh, city limits. Our first major project area that we'd like to focus on is a lot of that acreage behind Demers uh, heading back toward the uh, interstate and, and the Natural Parkway. And this, you know, we stop at, uh, at Plano Road on the right-hand side in our development area. This one's just on the left-hand side, but you know, clearly within, right across the street, we're, also, we're already on the, uh, in the city across Scotts Road from this property. Uh, we're across the road on uh, Plano Road to this property. 
uh, so I think this one makes uh, you know this one makes a perfect good logical sense uh, to bring this property into the city. So that everybody understands, though, we're only talking about the lot that is on the corner of Scottsville Road and Plano Road across the street from Jimmy Deemer's Market. Yeah, we're only talking. This is just about two acres. Right. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Hill? Yes. Waltrip? Yes. Williams? Yes. We'll have a need to go into closed session at this time. Will there be a need for a vote? There will not be a need for a vote. No need for a vote. Thank you for tuning in.